Okay, I think we're now ready to do a mirror. We're going to do some of the other car components in an assembly. So our mirror heading for that. So we'll go to 3D model, click on mirror, and we want to change the second option, mirror a solid, because we want the whole thing to happen no matter what's included in it, rather than the front later on and then having to reselect that. If we do it as a solid, it's going to be automatic. We shall spin it around, make sure we're in the same thing, and we're selecting our mirror plane. We want the one going down the inside of the car. Make sure remove original is not clicked. Hit OK, and hopefully we have a nice copy of our car looking very good. Good time to save that. And we're ready to do a new assembly. So we're going to go on New. We want a standard assembly in millimeters and we're going to create it. So this is a fun difference between 123D and Inventor. In 123D we have one file with all of our parts in it and we can put them, them separate. In Inventor we make separate parts and then we make a separate type of file called an assembly where we add them together. First thing we do is our black assembly is to place our work and we find our file. Cadet body is going to be our first one. Open it up and we click to put it in. You might need to right click and then hit OK to get to that menu. At the moment we can click and drag and move it in space, but we actually want it locked down. It's going to make the rest of the car assembly a lot easier. So what we're going to do is to start to do some constraints. So just like a sketch constraint, except with the parts and how they interact. We need to open up our cadet body and our assembly one origins to see our planes, and then we're going to match them up. So we'll start with the one down the middle, and then we hover over and find the matching one. And you can see it wants to lock them together. We want the offset to be zero, so they lock together. And we're going to repeat another two times. So let's do a different one. This time we'll do the one looking from above. Put it in at zero. Sometimes it'll give an error and it won't line up. In that case, you'll need to change the solution until it's facing the correct way. One more to do. And that's our one looking from the front of the car towards the back. Now you can see these two are at an offset of 203 and hitting zero probably won't fix that. If you get into trouble with it, just make sure the correct one is selected, otherwise you get an error, you click edit and change it to the other one. Okay, now if we click and drag, nothing happened, locked down exactly like we want. Good chance to save our assembly. And we're ready to continue. Let's place some other components. For instance, our wide wheels at the front of the car. I'm going to put in two of those. Then click and OK. No idea where my car's gone. But the constraints work in a very similar way. Okay, problem with the camera there. Basically what we want to do is to make an axle constraint. So if we click on something around, you'll notice we get a dotted center line. Click on that. We go first because the car is already locked. And then find something that we want to match for this and you'll see it locks it in place. This one will switch it between frontwards and backwards. Oh, I accidentally cancelled that. Let's do that one more time. So something around to get the center line. Something else around. That lock in place. Now if I try and click and drag with the mouse, you'll notice that it can spin around, it can rotate, but it's all locked on that axis. One more to get the wheel in place. We designed it for a one mil gap. So we shall do that now. 
then click this flat surface here. Notice which way the arrow is facing. Turn it around and click the flat surface here. We match up the two diagrams so the arrows are pointing towards each other. Set it to one mil like we designed it. OK. Zoom out, the wheel is perfectly in place. Your job now is to bring in the other two wheels and lock all four into place and then save.